All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to attempt something new here. Um, kind of a concept for a series that I was thinking about here recently. You know, I was scouring the internet and I was like, where can we add value? Um, you know, obviously the Insight series is doing just fine. Um, it's off to a good start. I think we're 10 episodes in at this point. Um, but I wanted to maybe move around a little bit uh, here on the YouTube channel and, and show a couple different perspectives and possibly address some things that may not come up in the Insight series. Um, or at the very least with a weekly release schedule, um, I want you to still be uh, age qualified to consider the villages uh, by the time we get to the topic of interest. So um, I thought maybe we would do uh, a kind of a steeple of the uh, social media age that we're in now um, where we're doing reaction videos. Um, I think that there is uh, some some gold in them there hills uh, that we can talk about. Uh, I was running through some content uh, on YouTube recently and I was like, wow, you know, I have I have some things to say about this. Um, so this will be the first uh, video in a new series called Realtor Reacts. Um, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Let's see what happens. Uh, the first video up here um, is uh, by a YouTube channel, Sell My House Fast. And, and if I understand this correctly, this gentleman is from San Diego. Um, so not a not a villages uh, person. Um, this is a very young man here uh, who's clearly in the gym. Uh, good shoulder development there. Um, let's go ahead and see what he has to say about the five biggest lies real estate agents use. Beware. This ought to be interesting. What's up, everyone? I'm Ronnie with roseprops.com. And recently, I've been talking to a few of our clients. And I really wanted to know why exactly they were working with us. And a lot of them just said nothing more than, well, we just had to sell our house fast and that's what you guys specialize in. But a few of them actually had a few different stories and a few different lies that they came across working with different real estate agents. So first I wanna start with not every real estate agent is a liar. In fact, our company works uh, with some of the most respected real estate agents in San Diego all the time. My goal here is just to give you uh, the tools you need in order to-, to So that's interesting. Let's, let's talk about what he just said. My company works with some of the most respected real estate most respected real estate agents here in San Diego all the time. So what does his company do? They don't buy homes, apparently. Um, that's kind of an open door thing right now. Um, and that's a system that I had looked at and considered almost two decades ago now. Um, it looks like he's a referral agency. It looks like he is grading agents on a curve of some kind based on their criteria. Um, and then when you contact his services, he will then uh, contact the agent and set up appointments uh, for uh, interviewing um, on the listing side of things. So we specialize in selling homes fast. I, I don't know anyone who specializes in selling homes slow, so I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure if that's even really a value uh, point to recognize when someone is telling you something that's dishonest so you can make the right decision number one I already have a buyer for your house really cuz no you don't the chances of that real estate agent driving across town uh, with a, another client in the car saying man I really wish I had that house right there for the exact price that that seller wants to sell their house it probably didn't happen what really happened was they've talked to other people that are also looking to buy a house in similar size. Say you have a three bedroom, two bathroom house and they want to buy a three bedroom, two bathroom house. But the, the real estate agent fails to tell you that they're looking on the other side of town. The price range that they're looking for is a little bit different in a different type of neighborhood. Um, what really is happening is the real estate agent just wants you to, uh, to list with them so they don't lose out on their commission. Number okay. <clears throat> couple things there. I have a buyer for your home. So when we hear this, we're thinking a specific person um, with a direct interest in your particular property. And obviously this is a conversation. Um, he didn't set it up this way, but it's a conversation where you're talking with a for sale by owner. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to sign off on this one. 
this is a tactic. This is a conversation that happens. Um, it shouldn't. It's disingenuous. I don't care for it. Um, really, when you're talking to for sale by owners, um, you're trying to present value and you're trying to educate. Um, and if there is room there, if it makes sense for services to be provided, then by all means. But that's a determination that the owner has to make for themselves. A lot of for sale by owners, contrary to belief, are really just playing with the idea of selling their home, right? Um, they're testing the market. They're seeing what kind of reaction they're going to get. But these guys aren't marketing specialists, right? They, they don't have the reach and the width of a real estate professional. Um, in some market conditions, that can work. In other market conditions, that's going to be very, very, very unlikely to achieve the goal. Um, I knew agents and I know agents who will commonly, you know, go with this tack of, you know, e even to the degree of putting somebody in the car um, to act as a stand in for this buyer. Um, but this is this is not something that uh, works very often. OK, and I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, oh, you have a buyer. Show me the buyer. Show them to me. Show me a photograph with you in it and the buyer, right? Show me uh, an email. Show me something that says, I want that house, okay? And you, Mr. Agent, I'm directing you to go and secure that sale because you can put forth an offer with a commission agreement outside of a listing contract. Um, there are other methods by which that can be accommodated. Um, and it really it depends on the nuance of what was said here. Does is the agent saying, well, I have buyers who would be interested in your home, right? That's just the agent saying, hey, I have a, a, a big swath of folks that I'm working with right now, and your home is desirable uh, given the market uh, in the town. So um, that's a different statement uh, than what's being said here. But I will agree with him on this. That it, it's it's not. It is disingenuous um, the way that it's said. Um, and just for clarification, I don't participate in this type of um, tactic. Let's continue. Number two is going to be price. Most sellers believe their house is going to go for a lot more than what it really is going to. They probably went to websites like Zillow.com and just found a, a house that's around four or five blocks away that looks nothing like their house, maybe even twice the size, and they use that as an idea of where their house is going to go. And that's just not realistic. So what a real estate agent could potentially do is uh, list your house for the price that you want for your house. Let's say you want 600000 but it's really valued at $545,000. Um, no one's going to exactly... Uh, give you an offer for your house. They're, they're going to wait until it gets down to a more reasonable amount. The real estate agent knows this and it's just what they really want is your listing. They, they know that it's not going to go for that 600000 but eventually they'll start talking you down like, hey, we need to drop the price. We should probably drop the price. And then you're going to start getting offers in the ballpark that it's really supposed to be valued at. A real estate agent could say, well, I want you to get $600,000 for your house because the more you make on your house, the more commission I get. Uh, yes, that is true, but it's not exactly the whole truth. The reality is, if they know that the house isn't going to sell until it reaches around five hundred forty-five thousand um, dollars, the the difference in the commission is is pennies. Number three is going to be an open. Okay, so taking an overpriced listing and playing into the fantasy um, and the fallacy that is my home is worth X amount based on these unqualified comps that I've secured via different sources as an owner. Um, yeah, this is a common practice, unfortunately. Um, and again, this is not something that I'm a big fan of. Uh, I don't normally participate in this. Um, there have been exceptions. There have been circumstances where, uh, I'll be in front of the owner and I recognize that this owner just wants to try, right? And the, the length of how far away we are from the recommended price and the market value is really going to come into play here. So if, if, you know, if I'm sitting in front of my owner and a lot of my sellers are folks that I sold homes to already. So this is, these are folks who are coming back to me. So I have a relationship here. Um, if they want to go an extra five or 10 
thousand dollars on the market. I'm usually pretty pretty pliable with that idea because um, markets shift, right? And and but of course I'm going to be basing that on the condition of the home, the time of year, the type of product that it is, um, and all the other considerations, right? It, it's it's a judgment call. Um, the tactic that he's referring to is just go in, get the listing, right? Doesn't matter, get the listing, okay? 20,000 over, get the listing. 50,000 over, get the listing. Homes falling down, get the listing. Um, the, the thought process there is get the listing and then beat the seller over the head for the next however long it takes to get the home within a saleable range, okay? Um, this, is, this is no good for anybody, right? On the, on the professional side, we're investing marketing dollars. Although realistically, you're probably, as an agent, you're probably holding back marketing dollars, right? You're not really giving it the full oomph um, because you know the home is too high, right? There's no, there's no debate in your mind. You did the CMA, right? You know what the home is worth. You see the market trends. You know what direction the market is moving in. So it's not like it's going to surprise you. Um, on the seller side of things, you know, like you go back to the inside video on pricing and I say it there too, you know, it's like we get in this position of uh, being firm as if somehow we're going to make the market do what we want it to do. Um, that's not how it works. That's never how it's been. So it's, it's really about seller resistance and allowing time for the seller to settle into a more realistic understanding and position. Um, unfortunately, what happens when this tactic gets deployed is uh, we lose time on market. And if you, every market's going to be different, but here in the villages, if you cross that 60 day, 90 day threshold, um, now you're dealing with a different kind of buyer, right? And you are just now getting to market value, right? You've gone through a series of adjustments and downward adjustments. Um, and now you're just getting to market value. So now for the first time, 60, 90 days later, you're an actual consideration uh, in the marketplace. Um, this doesn't tend to end well. Um, even if you secure a sale in the you know, 90 to 180 day window, um, you probably lost money playing around, um, you know, being a goof. So uh, let's go ahead and continue. Nosy neighbors, not potential buyers. This isn't like the TV shows where they have a whole bunch of people going in and looking at your house and they get 13 different offers from a whole bunch of people. That's not real, that's, that's not what happens. What, what really happens is the real estate agent uses that to funnel in potential clients for themselves to sell houses to in the future. Um, your house is just a funnel. Uh, the chance of you actually getting a sale out of an open house is just slim and none. It's probably, it's probably not gonna happen. Number four. Okay. In the Insight Series, we're going to be having a conversation about open houses. Um, it's part of the schedule. Uh, so I'm not going to dive too deep into this here. Suffice it to say, um, the, the scenario that he is depicting here is accurate outside of the villages. Um, this is very much true. Open houses do not produce results uh, the way that agents would like them to uh, anywhere near as well outside the villages as they do inside the villages. And, and there's a number of reasons to go behind that that we'll, we'll dive into in the Insight series. Let's keep going. Commissions are non-negotiable. Everything in real estate is negotiable. Everything. If you have to negotiate the amount of commission that you're paying. Everything, not everything. Um, you have expenses uh, associated with the sale in terms of dock stamps, um, in terms of title insurance. Uh, these are not negotiable items. Um, closing dates, yes. Furniture items, sure. Close, uh, uh, price, absolutely. Um, commission, yeah, commission's negotiable. Um, we're gonna, here again, <laughs> we're gonna do an insight video on why commissions and how they work and, and, and you know what, what that is all about. Um, suffice it to say is that more experienced agents who understand what the commission actually represents are going to be able to 
be more pliable with what they do with the commission. I will tell you this as just a general note. You get what you pay for in a lot of cases. Um, I say that and then I realize that I've had a couple of recent experiences where uh, you didn't get what you pay for, you paid too much. Um, but that's based on my interpretation of value of services versus uh, dollars paid. So let's go ahead and finish hearing what he has to say and then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pop back in here. Paying the real estate agent, then they're probably not worth it. You may be also told that they're the lowest commission, and this may be true, but it may come at your expense because they don't have good advertising, bad marketing, their negotiation skills are terrible, or they're just new to uh, real estate. This could really hurt your sale and it would take a long time to actually sell your house or even kill the deal altogether. No yeah, so I'm going to push back on that a little bit. Um... Part of the thing that you know you can do with commissions is you're going to scale commissions based on how much marketing um, you're perceiving is going to have to go into uh, the sale. Um, product, different product types, different time of the year. Again, you know, there's all these considerations, and that's why it's important that you have some experience um, if you're going to be playing around with commissions. And your broker is going to have things to say, right? The broker ship is going to have things to say about that. Um, because they have a, uh, a financial interest in that commission as well. So the part I want to really push back on is this, this notion of if you're a newer agent, um, everyone has to start somewhere. You know, I, I don't appreciate the, the idea that, you know, newer agents are going to be the ones offering the least commission because they're the least experienced. And thus the idea is that they're going to perform, uh, so poorly that they, they don't warrant, uh, the market median commission there. Um, that's not entirely true. That's a little disingenuous in and of itself. Your newer agents are part of a brokerage ship. And in that brokerage ship are experienced agents as well. Um, newer agents tend to have shadows. Newer agents tend to have access to their broker, who's a very experienced and capable individual in their own right. Um, other agents are available. A lot of times when I was new, um, if I ran into something that I didn't feel I could handle, and this is something that you know most brokerships very much encourage, I'd reach out. I reach out to one of the more experienced agents. Um, if I have to, um, I will cut them in on a percentage of the sale on the commission um, to kind of get my back and double check my work and make sure that uh, things are progressing along uh, properly. There have been numerous times where I've been called upon um, as a more experienced agent uh, to come in and sit down and talk with a seller or talk with a buyer um, because one of my newer agents, uh, and it doesn't matter what brokerage ship I'm with at the time, one of the newer agents just needs some help, right? Doesn't know how to have that conversation. Um, it happens quite a bit where uh, a newer agent will call me and ask for advice. Um, the point here is that, you know, agents will collaborate in order to be successful. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking, well, what's in it for the more experienced agent? From my perspective, and, and it's, it's kind of been my outlook for probably the last 10, 12 years, right? That newer agent, I want to make sure that they understand the fundamentals and that they're doing well, right? They're not necessarily a competitor for me, right? But what they are is a future collaborator, okay? Someone that I know I can trust and work with um, that's going to do the contract right. I don't have to second guess their motives. Um, and they're going to behave confidently. Um, when you get a little further along in your career, you start coming up against agents or you, maybe it's, you start recognizing um, shortfalls, right? And you spend a lot of time tidying up and cleaning up a transaction. Um, and that's part of the learning process, you know, so we, we accept that as part of the uh, as part of the process there. Um, but yeah, this idea that, you know, you, you get a lower commission if you're getting a less experienced agent, that's that's not necessarily true. Number five, working with a real estate agent will make you more money when it comes to selling your house. The reason you would hear this is the National Association of Realtors actually shows a survey of the average price of a house sold with an agent 
and also with a household without an agent. Although they do fail to tell you that roughly 9% of the houses sold for sale by owner are just manufactured homes or mobile homes. The prices of manufactured homes and mobile homes can drastically reduce the average price of the house. That's not it. That's, that's, that's incorrect. Or maybe it's correct, but it doesn't matter. Um, even if that wasn't the case, and I don't know it to be the case or not, um, the reason that that happens, and, and you know, this is, this is one of those things where you have statistics, and depending upon how you present those statistics, um, you can more or less create the desired uh, outcome, right? So you sell, your home sells for more when you're working with a realtor. Well, there's a lot of reasons for that, but the, the math-wise, it's because we're calculating gross sale, right? We're calculating top dollar, right? And the reason that the for sale by owner homes sell for less is because they're taking the agent out of the equation. The, a for sale by owner, typically their strategy is to cut the commission out of the pricing, and they figure that that's a net sale at that point. And so they're going to underprice the home in order to attract buyers um, for the value. They're going to hit the value trigger uh, in the back of a buyer's mind. Um, and they're going to create a situation where they become a consideration, even if they wouldn't necessarily be competing uh, well in the open market at, at actual market. Um, so, of course, their net sale is going to reflect lower um, on the scale than the gross sales. Uh, with with realtors because you're seeing a market you're seeing a home being sold at the highest value that the market will provide for okay and then you're seeing homes that are being sold heavily discounted because they elected not to use a professional right it has nothing to do with mobiles or modulars and, and what he's saying here is that these products tend to be less expensive um, and thus, if they make up the majority of the pool, it's going to depress that FISPO number. Um, that's, I don't think that's the case necessarily. I don't know about San Diego. Maybe he's talking about San Diego specifically, but. Sold for sale by owner, which in turn would make that look a lot less than if you were to work with a realtor. In fact, over 500,000 houses a year are sold without a real estate agent, strictly from seller to buyer. That's it. No, it's probably a lot more than that, given the, the given the volume of overall transactions. And I, I feel like he's talking on a national stage. Um, I'd be very curious to know where he came up with these numbers. Once again, I'm Ronnie with Rose Props, and I hope you've learned something today. So the video is essentially over. He's just going to do his outro now. Um, that was interesting. Um, and this is, I think this is a good example because, you know, I, I don't know Ronnie here. I, I happened to cross this video. Um, and obviously Ronnie and I serve very different markets. Um, but this goes a long way to illustrating how agents can disagree, right? Um, we can have huge gulfs. Uh, between our opinions and our outlooks, uh, either on industry practices or pricing a home, um, you know, the condition of the market. There's, there's always room for, for disagreement uh, between colleagues. Um, this, has been, this has been interesting. This has been fun. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, you get two, two very different perspectives here. Um, yeah, this was a lot of fun. We'll probably continue this series. I think I think um, what we're going to try and do is we're going to do the Insight Series on Wednesdays. Um, I've pretty much got that schedule worked out uh, and that content being created and, and edited out uh, on its schedule. Um, we're probably going to aim to put Reorder Reacts on Sundays and kind of so that I'm not constantly binging you with, with new content. Um, this is Christopher, uh, real estate professional uh, and specialist here in the villages. Um, Let's have some fun. Have a great day.